Hi, this is Brandy Kosky with dietsandreview.com, and with me is Paulette Lambert. She's the Director of Nutrition at the California Health and Longevity Institute. And while that name might not sound familiar right now, here in a couple weeks when ABC's new Extreme Home Makeover date, Weight Loss Edition debuts, you'll hear more about Paulette and the California Health and Longevity Institute. How are you today, Paulette? I'm great. So you are working with the contestants for Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition. And yes. there's yes. eight contestants that we're going to see on this first season. And the thing that they all kind of share in common is that they're classified as super obese. And this isn't a term that is very well known. We know obese people, but super obese is a completely new category. Um, can you talk to us about what qualifies for that? Right. Um, you know, obesity means that you're basically 20% um, over your ideal weight. Morbid obesity or extreme obesity means you're more than 100 pounds overweight. And these people were much more than 100 pounds overweight. Many of them were 300, 400 pounds overweight. So these really classify as the extreme obese. Got it. And do you know if they're of, uh, what percent of our population can be called super obese? You know, I think it's it's above 10%. I mean, we have 311 million people in the United States, and I know the super obese is above 10%, and it's an area or a segment of the population that unfortunately is growing, and not to mean the pun, but really growing in size. Those statistics are going up. That's really scary. It's frightening. I, I mean, like I said, I, that's a term. I mean, I've heard, like you said, more morbid obesity, but super obesity is something. How long has this even been used? Right. I mean, it, it's, it's really sad because when you become super obese, you have a hard time functioning in society. Right. You know, you, most of these people become very withdrawn or even homebound, and so it makes it very, very difficult for them to, to contribute to society or to get, get anything back from society. They become very isolated. Right. So for the contestants, or they're not even contestants, the um, members of Weight Loss Edition, the, individ the eight individuals that we'll see, what does their diet look like? Is that unique per person, or is there kind of a preset um, plan? No. What we did with them is, you know, we kind of really didn't want to use the word diet. We kind of looked at what do normal people need to eat. And, you know, the average American woman needs to be between 14 and 1,600 calories a day. And so for these people, that was definitely, for the women, that was definitely low enough calorically to take off a ton of weight, yet give, gave them adequate caloric intake to be able to do the exercise that they were required to do. Five hours a day is a lot of work, and we do, they do have a lot of fats to feed in for fuel, but we also didn't want them so uncomfortable. So for the women, it averaged about 1,500, and for the men, about 2,000. And again, the average American male to be at, for most of us, to, most men to be at ideal weight, need about 2,000 to 2,200 calories. Okay. And so what, was, what, was their eat, what did their eating plan look like? I imagine a lot of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins. Yeah, lean protein, definitely adequate, not excessive because too much protein means too many calories and we didn't want a high protein diet. We wanted a balanced diet. And so pretty much most of them had um, adequate protein, lean, and a ton of fruits and vegetables. That's the go-to for volume, three fruits a day with as many vegetables as most of them can eat, whether it's salad or green beans or broccoli. And then adequate carbs, but controlled in carbohydrates. For the women, that adequate carb ranged between five and six carb servings a day. And for the men, it was pretty much about um, eight servings of carbohydrate a day. And then small amount of fat. We kept the fat relatively low, but it wasn't there because we needed it for fish and some omega-3, especially for anti-inflammatory, due to all the exercise that they did. Right. Okay. So for people watching at home, um, the, the show, a lot of people may not know, ABC's Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition is created by J.D. Roth, who's also behind Biggest Loser. And right. the show is quite different than Biggest Loser, namely that it's not a competition. Um, but people, again, are going to watch this program, much like they do Biggest Loser, and say, I want to do that. How do I do it at home? So nutrition. You know, the website is going to be wonderful because on the website, the food plans, menus, recipes, food tips, blogs are all going to be available for people to follow along. So when people need guidance, because you do, you need to learn. You need to understand what you need to do. It's going to be on the website. Perfect. And again, even though people may vary slightly in their weight, that range of calories for almost everyone, even if you're not super morbid obese and you're just overweight or obese, Again, for most people, that's 1,500 for women, 2,000 for men is weight loss. Okay. 
So for people at home who have hundreds of pounds to lose, nutritionally, where's the best place to start? What's the first thing that they should do? Well, the first thing that was probably what stood out with this group, and, you know, whether it's season one I had and I've also had season two and an individual basis here for a week with me, there's a common denominator for almost all of them. And there's two things that really have to change. The first one is you cannot drink your calories. Every one of them drank a lot of sugar drinks, whether it was tea, juice, or soda, and most of the time it was soda. But one had stopped drinking soda six months before the contest and was drinking apple juice and cranberry juice instead, and those are even higher calorie density than eating Coke is. Mm -hmm. So clearly what we look at, get off the sugar drinks. You cannot drink your calories. These are big people. They drink a lot in a day. One of our contestants, one of our participants, basically drank a five-pound bag of sugar per week just in her soda intake. Wow. I know. That's, it's incredible when you think about how much sugar that is. A five-pound bag is huge. A pound of sugar is two cups. And so what do we have there? We had two and a half cups times um, five. I mean, she was doing something like, you know, huge amounts of 10 and a half to 11 uh, cups of sugar a week. Unbelievable. Well, so that's the first thing. You need to get rid of the sugar drinks because that for a lot of these contestants, that was even over 2,000 calories a day. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of our one of our participants, when I, he was a young man, I usually talked to him about his intake the first time I met him, and you know he really didn't. He's a big guy, he's six four. He didn't eat that much compared to other men I dealt with, and yet his weight was you know morbidly extreme obese. But he drank soda morning, noon, and night. He's a big guy. He drank a lot of soda. So this is the standard. This is kind of what, what kind of the common denominator that I found with all of them. The second thing is you got to get off the fast food. You cannot go to fast food. The burgers, the burritos, the pizza. You got to stop. Mm -hmm. You have to cook. You have to get some real food. Right. Because there's no fruits and vegetables, and you know the calorie concentration at fast food is high. You know it's not a lot of volume, but it's a lot of calories. And so if you ate three burgers, you're going to have your whole day's intake right there. Throw the fries in there. Get two burritos. A burrito at 1,200 calories, and you do two of them, and then you add the soda. You're already you're going to do 400, 500 pounds right there. Right, right. So for them, the fast food and the sugar drinks, those are the two steps that you have to take. Okay, great. So again, a lot of people are going to be watching this show, and and we follow each of these individuals on a one year journey. It's 365 days to lose the weight. The goal is to lose half their body weight. Um, people watching at home, again, are going to wonder, how do I do that? So at home, what's a healthy rate of weight loss? That if they you know, want it depends to try on your weight, and it depends on the activity. These people did five hours of activity a day. They, you know, they had TV cameras at home. They were monitored. That's a lot for a lot of people to do. I mean, for people that are morbidly obese at home, I would recommend starting with an hour and then eventually going to two hours a day if you can get it in your lifestyle. But just with the food issues alone, if somebody weighed 500 pounds, and we'll just say this is a, and you're doing an hour of exercise a day, let's just go with the hour, that person's maintenance is at least 5,500. And so if that man ate 2,000, he's got a 3,500 calorie deficit a day in a month, or even let's say in a month, let's use a month because that's more kind of what people look at, you want to look at a month. In a month, he is going to lose just from changing his food intake to 2,000 calories. He's going to lose 30 pounds right there with one hour of exercise a day. Wow. That's great. Yeah. It's great. So, you know, with one hour of walking out there and then getting your calories in line, you can be looking for weight loss, be probably for these people, between 20 and 35 pounds a month, depending on their size. That's fantastic. So Paulette, and that's not with a huge, you know, you may not have a trainer, you may not be able to do the five hours a day, you may have a job, you may have, you know, just physically don't think you're up to it, but clearly everybody can get 30 and 60 minutes of walking in a day and they can do the calories. Absolutely. I agree. So are there any trans, any specific transformations that you were really impressed with and that really stood out to you or are we just going to have to wait and see? I'm sorry, what was the question again? If, of the participants on the show, were there any transformations that really stood out to you who really just kind of yeah. knocked it yeah. out of the park? You know, many of them stand out. You know, I think, I, I think just the um, concept, some of these people have never cooked in their life. You know, to be able to go in the kitchen and make vegetables and to eat vegetables, some, for some of them, the, for the week that they were here, this was the first time they had eaten many normal vegetables that a lot of us take for granted and eat every day. This was new for them. 
And so I think that that kind of change is phenomenal to watch, that people now can manage food and have some basic cooking skills and can steam vegetables or roast green beans or make a roasted tomato soup and make a piece of grilled chicken and a piece of fish and make brown rice or quinoa and actually learn to enjoy good food. Wonderful. Well, we're really excited to watch and excited to see the work kind of behind the scenes that you've done with the contestant, or again, with the participants. So thank yeah. you so much, Paul. And again, so much of that's going to be on the website for people to go to, to be able to access and be able to kind of be able to follow along and kind of follow their plans because they're just healthy, balanced, normal, healthy eating. Great. That's a really great resource. We'll be sure to let everyone know. Okay. Thanks for dietsandreview.com. This is Brandi Kosky. Mm -hmm.